Today is Wednesday, December 21st. We're talking about what could be a historic visit, what's expected when Ukraine's president comes to Washington, D.C. Also, did Twitter help the Pentagon run a secret propaganda campaign? We're sharing details from the latest installment of the so-called Twitter files and some news about a big leadership shakeup at the social network. Plus, the latest track of a -a once-in-a-generation winter storm. Why Wells Fargo is now paying a record-breaking fine to the government. And how a World Cup victory parade got so out of hand, the players had to be airlifted out of there. Those stories and more news in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Today, the top officials in Washington are preparing for one of the most high-profile visits from a foreign leader we've seen in a while. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, is expected to make the trip to the U.S. The visit hasn't been officially announced, but several news outlets like the AP, Washington Post, and Reuters cite sources who confirmed it. It's a pretty big deal, since Zelensky hasn't left Ukraine since Russia first invaded his country back in February. Zelensky is expected to make an address to Congress and meet President Biden to talk about assistance from the U.S. and fighting for democracy. Some reports say the trip could end with the U.S. announcing it will send Ukraine the highly sophisticated Patriot missile defense system, which is more advanced than anything Ukraine's been given so far. The U.S. Congress is also considering approving another $45 billion in Ukraine aid as part of its yearly spending package this week. If it passes as expected, that would be the biggest infusion of American aid yet to Ukraine. And it would bring the total U.S. assistance to more than $100 billion. Just yesterday, President Zelensky visited a war-torn city in eastern Ukraine in what's being called perhaps his most dangerous trip since the war began. While he was there, soldiers gave him a flag with their signatures on it, and Zelensky promised to give it to President Biden while praising the troops' courage on the front lines. Russia's President Putin also commended his country's military and security agencies this week. He promised to continue the fight in Ukraine. So it seems at this point, both sides are in it for the long haul. Well, it is something women in Afghanistan have been worried about ever since the Taliban took over last year. This week, the Taliban's Ministry of Higher Education banned all women from attending universities. In a move, critics around the world are calling another broken promise. You may remember, when the Taliban first took over, it promised women would be able to keep the rights they gained in the years since U.S.-backed forces took over. But the Taliban has actually been cracking down on women's rights. Besides the university ban, most women and girls have been banned from attending high school. Women are now forced to wear head-to-toe coverings. They're no longer allowed in public parks and gyms, and they're banned from traveling alone without a male guardian, which leaves a lot of women confined to their homes. The United Nations and several countries, including the U.S., condemned the Taliban over this latest crackdown. One American official said the U.S. will see what can be done to hold the Taliban accountable. A new report shows Twitter helped the U.S. Defense Department with a propaganda campaign. The latest batch of the so-called Twitter files came out last night. A reporter from The Intercept named Lee Fang was given access to some internal documents from Twitter and spoke to Twitter officials. Now, Fang says he learned the social media company let fake accounts push pro-American messages about the U.S. military's activities in the Middle East and that Twitter actually amplified their visibility. Feng says this all started in 2017 and kept going until at least May of this year. All while social media companies like Twitter were exposing and taking down influence campaigns out of Russia and Iran. Although the reporter also pointed out that the information he got might not have told the full story since the records were incomplete. So far, no response from the Pentagon or the former Twitter execs accused in this. Remember, Twitter's new owner, Elon Musk, has said all of these Twitter files are coming out in an effort to boost transparency. In the past, he's accused the company's previous management of censorship and says it favored liberal views and personalities. Musk has not said how many more Twitter files reports we can expect. Stay tuned. Speaking of Twitter and its new owner and CEO, Elon Musk, Musk is now saying he'll resign as Twitter's chief executive as soon as he finds a replacement. He tweeted, quote, I will resign as CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. After that, I will just run the software and servers teams. It's not clear how long this process might take. And of course, he'll also still own the platform. His decision comes after he ran a Twitter poll earlier this week, asking users to weigh in on whether he should step down as head of the company and promise to abide by the results. Well, 17 and a half million votes later, and more than 57% of people said, yes, he should resign. 
Musk's shakeup of Twitter has gotten a lot of attention since he bought the company back in October and has made several controversial changes since. Stay tuned to see who might eventually take over his leadership role. More news is coming up, but first, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ever been through a big life change and wish you had a user manual to help you navigate it all? I know I have. I remember starting this very podcast and business, and the first year or two especially came with a lot of uncertainty. Well, now I'm navigating parenting for the first time. And while friends, family, or the internet may be well-intentioned, sometimes you need a professional to say the thing you actually need to hear. Whether it's a big transition in life or just a feeling that you're stuck or something else is bothering you, therapists are trained to help you figure it all out in a way that's truly helpful. And as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash newsworthy. Winter is officially here. Today is the winter solstice, meaning it's the first day of astronomical winter. It happens every year because the Earth spins on a tilted axis. And today, the northern hemisphere is tilted farthest from the sun. With that, today will be the shortest day and longest night of the year, at least in the northern hemisphere. Of course, for a lot of Americans, it's been feeling like winter for a while now. And that wintry weather is about to get a lot more extreme. The National Weather Service has now issued alerts from Washington State to Georgia. Dangerously cold temperatures and snow already started moving into the Pacific Northwest and Northern Plains. In places like Montana, the Dakotas, and most of Minnesota, even the high temperatures are below zero. And it's extremely windy, so the wind chill could make it feel like 40 degrees below zero this week. And the storm is not expected to end anytime soon. Today, it will start to impact the Midwest, bringing blizzard conditions that are expected to last into the weekend. Then it keeps moving east, and people all along the East Coast, from Florida to New England, will get drenching rain, strong winds, and some areas will get a couple of rounds of snow. All of this could impact holiday travel, causing treacherous road conditions and flight delays and cancellations. One community in Northern California is now recovering from a powerful earthquake. It caused widespread damage, knocking some homes off their foundations, tearing up roads, and causing mass power outages. Turns out it was a 6.4 magnitude quake that happened about 200 miles north of San Francisco, just off the Pacific coast in Humboldt County. Sadly, two people died, at least a dozen more were hurt. But officials say those numbers likely would have been much worse if it wasn't for an early earthquake warning system that launched last year. Because of ShakeAlert, more than 3 million people got phone notifications about the quake, giving them up to 20 seconds to prepare. That system is available all across California, Oregon, and Washington. Wells Fargo has agreed to pay the largest fine in the history of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The $1.7 billion penalty is part of a settlement that also means the bank will pay another $2 billion to customers who were impacted. The deal resolves allegations that the bank harmed more than 16 million people who had accounts, auto loans, and mortgages through Wells Fargo. The Consumer Watchdog Agency says the third largest bank in the U.S. illegally repossessed vehicles, improperly denied mortgage modifications, charged illegal overdraft fees, and more. In response to this latest settlement, the bank's CEO said, quote, We and our regulators have identified a series of unacceptable practices that we have been working systematically to change and provide customer remediation where warranted. The U.S. Postal Service will soon have one of the largest electric vehicle fleets in the nation. It just announced plans to buy at least 66,000 electric vehicles by 2028. And by 2026, the agency expects to buy zero-emissions delivery trucks almost exclusively. To make it happen, the post office says it's investing $9.6 billion to update its aging mail delivery trucks. $3 billion is coming from the landmark climate law that Congress passed earlier this year. This comes after years of political and legal battles over the idea of electrifying the postal fleet. By the way, FedEx has plans to completely electrify its delivery feed by 2040, and Amazon has also ordered 100,000 electric vans to get out packages. Argentina soccer star Lionel Messi can add one more accomplishment to his resume, and not just his recent World Cup victory. He also now has the most liked post on Instagram. After winning the World Cup final, Messi posted a gallery of photos from the trophy presentation, and now it has nearly 68 million likes and counting. 
that surpasses a photo of an egg for most likes on the social media platform. Overall, Messi has four of the top 10 most liked posts on there. But if there's still any doubt about how popular he and the rest of his team are, let's talk about the parade meant to celebrate the World Cup win. Millions of people packed into the streets and highways of Buenos Aires. And things got pretty out of hand, with everyone trying to get a glimpse of the team. So players actually had to be evacuated from their own celebration via helicopter. But they made the most of it by flying over the parade route. The government just ended up calling it an aerial parade. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, thanks to our sponsor, the Moms and Murder podcast. When you hear the word Chippendales, the first thing that comes to mind is probably an image involving, well, bow ties. What probably doesn't come to mind is homicide. But I recently learned on the Moms and Murder podcast that there is in fact a dark history behind the infamous brand, a history involving bad business dealings, jealousy, and yes, murder. And it is interesting, but it's not just sensational stories like that that hosts Melissa and Mandy are skilled at delivering. They also bring a compassionate take to some of the lesser-known stories and help to share information about unsolved cases, as well as sharing ways anyone can get involved to help. Be advised, though, that Moms and Murder is undergoing a name change, so ring in the new year with the new title, Moms and Mysteries, highlighting a real crime every Tuesday. So subscribe to Moms and Murder. Simply search their name on whatever app you're listening on right now. Just open your podcast app of choice, type in Moms and Murder, then hit subscribe. That's Moms and Murder, soon to be Moms and Mysteries, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Okay, now back to Work Wednesday. Companies that want to attract new workers may have to shell out a lot more money than ever before. A recent survey from the New York Fed asked, quote, suppose someone offered you a job today in a line of work that you would consider. What is the lowest wage or salary you would accept? And the average answer it got back was nearly $74,000. That's the highest it's ever been. And the central bank has been doing this survey since 2014. But there was actually quite a big difference in how men and women answered. On average, women said it would take $61,000 for them to switch jobs, while men would accept no less than $85,000. All that said, they might not be looking to change jobs anyway. The same survey found workers are more satisfied with their current compensation, benefits, and promotion opportunities at the jobs they have now than they were just a few months ago. And a lot of them should feel comfortable. As reports have pointed out, job seekers demanding higher wages means current workers have more job security, and it could stay that way for years to come. All right, thank you so much for joining us as part of your daily routine. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 